Hello there, it's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. Okay, so today I'm doing quite a complicated sew, um, which might not be very easy to follow, but I hope it is. I'm basically doing an unlined jacket that has no collar and that is very, very simple. Now, you don't really see these for sale anymore. Um, I, th I suppose they come in and out of fashion. The only time you really see them is when they're part of a uniform. But I do want to go through and just make one to show you how simple it is. Now, in a way, if you have an overlocker, this is quite simple. Um, if you don't have an overlocker, then it's going to be quite tricky because you do need a way to seal the ends. But hopefully, it will give you the courage to have a go. Now, the basic body shape is that as it's not fitted or anything, the only thing we really need to worry about is the arms. So what I've done is I've taken the pattern from the arms off another jacket, which I know fits and everything else like that. So, and it's a good place to start if you want to do your own designing, as it were. So, first things first, um, sew your bits together so that you can sew them onto the main body. Now, the fabric I'm using is a lightweight linen and um, it does have the advantage that it doesn't, it doesn't take much care after the garment's finished. It does have the disadvantage if that I um, can't tell which side is which. So if you see me pondering, it's that I'm checking that I've got one of each side rather than two of each side. Which is just a Fiona thing. She has to work through these things. So if I start this one off at this way, I will have one of each side of the... the And also, before I do anything else, I need to hem the supporting structures. Now, uh, these are kind of backing that go on where the collar would be. And then I have two long strips that go down the front. So. I know, it's quite boring. But at least I don't have to worry about whether I'm doing the right side or the wrong side of this. literally go down the long side which is the other side okay so this is kind of the interfacing where the collar would be we still need some sort of structural support and I'll just take my other long piece Depending on how this jacket wears and looks, I'm going to come back and decide the length and I'm also going to come back and decide whether it needs any interfacing along the shoulders or it needs any um, even shoulder pads, you know, but it, it is pretty much a case of I'm going to do the basis now and then I'm going to move on to the other bits. So saying that, that to be done, what I now need to do is I need to stitch the body together. So I'm just coming across the shoulder line here. And I'm just coming along the sides of the main body. Now, I know it may seem that I've just 
whiz through everything. Um, in a way, this is easier for me because I now have a definite right side and wrong side. And that's what I was worrying about, really. That, you know, there's, there's things that you need to be concerned with. And to be honest, getting everything lined up and the right way round was quite an issue for me. So, I'm now coming across the other shoulder. And I'm now coming down the north side. So technically, all my bits have now been sewn, and next I can sew my bits to the main garment. Now there is a slight shaping in this, I must admit, it, only that it goes in slightly at the waist. But, you know, nothing, nothing untoward, nothing complicated at all. And that's what this jacket is, and not complicated. Now because I have enough material, this is the Walthamstow material that I bought. Uh, I bought three metres, and I paid £1.10 per metre of it. And so far, I have cut out this jacket, I have cut out one skirt, and one pair of trousers. And saying that, I have enough fabric to make one small skirt. So, you know, we're then talking about quite a large amount of clothing for the price of £3.30 in total. Uh, it gets a bit more complicated if you have to include the petrol that I, I spent to get there, but, you know. So yes, there are bargains out there and it is worth it. So I've got my jacket here and what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to sew the sleeve in. Now I'm going to turn the sleeve inside out and I'm literally going to place it in the jacket. Now because our arms bend forward, what I want is the seam here rather than the seam at the bottom. So I'm just going to make sure that that's lined up. So this seam goes slightly towards the front and this V goes at the bottom. So once that's lined up, I can literally start sewing. And just double check that I've got my insides inside and it is just a, a quick glance it's it's not complicated so now that's firmly in the sewing machine and it's going in the right direction what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the point of this and I'm going to line it up to the top and again if it's slightly wonky um, it's not cut correctly then I am going to put the gathers at the top, but I should be okay. So. Now what I don't want is I don't want to just sew and have like loads of flappy bits. So I am kind of keeping an eye that I'm not picking it up from underneath and that I am not disrupting the pattern by doing a big, big triangle. So now that I've gone over the seam at the top and I've kept an eye for where the bottom is, I can then adjust it so that I can double check that I have just enough fabric to sew to the bottom. So again, any pleats or gathers that you need to do, they're going to be at the top rather than the bottom. Okay, and then obviously, Keep an eye on the weight of the garment, although this is exceptionally lightweight. We do, we don't want it to pull the stitches. So, and 
coming down to the bottom. So that's the sleuving. I always check that I haven't missed a bit and then we can just have a look, open it out and just check the lie of the sleeve so we can see that we've got the, the seam slightly off centre and we haven't got any pucks at the bottom. Okay, so that's how you put the sleeve in. Now we're going to do the collar. Now I'm going to start at the back because, no reason at all really, and I'm going to take the naked edge and follow that line round so that the stitches will be on the inside and then we can have that nice and neat. So, there we are. Line it up and away we go, really. Now normally, um, Whenever I sew, I always put the smaller bit on top. I don't, I don't have to worry too much here. I'm not doing any complicated lines. The line is the same, and um, so it's just going to fold over. Okay, so now I've got that in, I can then take the long strip, and I can line it up the same just to double check that everything is where it should be. So, And um, because we haven't done the bottom as yet, we're, we're going to think about that. What I'm going to do is have a fitting, as it were. I'm going to work everything downwards so that I can I can then line it up. Now sharp corners on um, an overlocker uh, or even tight curbs are a bit of a problem. I actually prefer to come off and then come back on again so that I can I can line it up properly. Alright, so now I'm doing exactly the same. I'm finishing the collar edge, as it were, down the front of the garment. And this one might be better to, to see and watch because you'll be able to see me sew this side. So I'm going to line it up. And any scraggy bits I'm going to put outwards so that they're not in my way. So, just getting it started. It's not tuning particularly easy today. Okay. So that I can do my sharp corners, I'm just going to take it on and take it off again. One long last strip and then we're ready for the fitting. And the other arm, but I was going to come back to that, I hadn't really forgotten.
I know. <laughs> okay, so let's just adjust this camera. And technically, I think the sleeves are a bit baggy, so I could take those in. I like the length. I'm actually not worried about the length of the whole garment, so it actually feels quite comfortable. And these seams will roll in better once they've had an iron. I know, I hate to swear on TV. So yeah, that's great. Um, so the next job, <clears throat> other than sewing in the iron, is we've decided the length of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlock the bottom to get a much nicer edge and um, it's pretty much that it's out because it's such a lightweight jacket all I have to do is I have to fold it once and so whereas if it was the case of a heavier material um, yeah I, it's, it's just a yeah fold it once so it's it makes life a lot easier so what I'm doing there is I'm just tucking in the fold of the extra flap. Now this will mean that I can, gives it a bit more security. If it's attached at the bottom and attached at the top, then it's a lot easier to do. <clears throat> so I've got my sewing machine here and it's all ready to go. Yeah, when I have two sewing machines plugged in, sometimes I um, I push the pedal for the wrong sewing machine, and it always makes me jump. But such is life. So I start at the beginning. This is literally the curve at the bottom, and I can take the fabric. And a fold once and then sew round. Now this means that I've got a nice line of stitches um, to follow because I'm going to follow I'm literally going to sew on the overlocked part. I just offended it then, sorry I had it set up for buttonhole for my last night so and I hadn't even checked, hadn't even thought. Now we do need some way of fastening the garment. Um, you know, I think going for buttons is a good idea. And whilst we put the buttonholes in garment it will hold those strengthening straps those lining heart lining thing in place so because it's kind of a lazy thing. Um, I, I knew I didn't have four purple rolls of thread. And if I was doing a garment that was tight or anything, then what I would do is I would put the first layer of 
stitches in purple because sometimes if you pull it you can see it through but the idea of the overlock of stitches is that they're not seen I'm going to take my done sleeve, I'm going to turn it inside out and whereas before I only had to fold once, on the sleeve I'm going to have to fold once, twice. Now because this is such a lightweight jacket, if I did put pockets in it, it might distort the lines of the jacket. So there's a lot to be said for either putting a fake pocket in which would just be a folded over flap sewn on. Or just ignore it, just leave it. There's no, you know, women don't have to have pockets. Um, it's, sometimes it's nice. Right. Okay, so, so a couple of inches and adjust. job is we're going to sew the buttonholes in. Now I am going to say that because it's a lightweight linen suit what I'm going to go for is quite plasticky buttons so that they're quite lightweight and I'm only going to go for a few. Um, you could get quite carried away with this jacket. Um, I've got an awful long strip to put buttons in, so I could go for, I don't know, 17 on each side, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm actually going to change the colour of the cotton because I want you to be able to see it. So I'm not changing the bottom but I am going to change the top here and I'm just going to do one. Oh, don't tell me I've got to finish the machine. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, there it is. Oh, no. They're filthy, actually. I can't really see anything. But they were, they were a present for my dad um, because he was moaning that he couldn't read the menu in a restaurant. And, um, yeah, so I bought them. Oh, I can't do it. All right, I'm switching off and I'll be back. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so while you were away, or while I was away, one or the other, I threaded the machine. But before I threaded it in the grey, I threaded it back in the purple and I did the other sleeve. So it's now got two sleeves, which is nice. I also took an executive decision and I did a line of top stitch just around the whole edge of the back and everything, just to help keep it in place, even though I do plan on ironing it, I know. Okay, so I'm just about to do my third buttonhole. Now, I must admit, I'm quite liking the idea of doing it in a different colour. I think it just makes life just that bit easier. So, I've decided the pace, I've decided the size. What I'm going to do is, I'm not going to use the specialist foot, I rarely use it, I, ha I have one, um, just because I don't think I need to, really. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take my top thread here and I'm going to lie it in line from where I start. So, yes, uh, that's a buttonhole foot, 
you're welcome to use them and um, practice on other bits of paper and do the size in um, this is like a chalk pencil now I know that you can't see that on there because it's just not bright enough or different enough shade so I do have the extra clue of my start line which is that thread and I'm just going to keep that there so let's get the machine started we're going to start on a four and a two and we're going to go to one and when we come to the end of that chalk line which is the length of your button plus a quarter of an inch okay sorry I'll do it properly it is the length of your button plus the height of your button plus a quarter of an inch so now the trick is to see when to stop and because I've got the pencil line and I've got that thread there I can literally just sew to that thread and I know it just makes life easier for me in fact I have taken to um, sewing up one and then sewing up one moving the foot um, just because it doesn't work very well on this machine so okay then the next trick is to get a pin stitcher a ripper um, sorry get a stitch ripper and a pin and then just cut that buttonhole okay so other than any extras that I could add this is literally my jacket now I check the time and I switch the camera off for 12 minutes I didn't leave the room <laughs> sometimes I go and get a coffee or something and um, yes a perfectly adequate works jacket for just pretty much going in taking it off really um, yes so thank you so much for watching my name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee uh, please like share and subscribe